Good morning. Welcome to the Faculty of Science and Technology Orientation 2020. I know you're eager to get going, but we are awaiting a few more students to join. We are a um, hundred and small, and we want to get a few more persons in so that they can participate in the session. So if you give us maybe, let's say five minutes, and then we'll get cracking. So it's nine o'clock now at 9.05. With the numbers we have, we will get started. Once again, welcome to the Faculty of Science and Technology. And I'm looking forward to spending some time with you this morning.
Good morning again. Um, welcome for those who are just joining us to our Faculty of Science and Technology orientation, um, virtual orientation for 2020. Our lineup this morning, we're going to have um, a welcome. So I'm Dr. Shereen James Williamson. I'm the Associate Dean in the Faculty of Science and Technology with responsibility for um, undergraduate matters. This morning, we're going to have a welcome from our Dean, Professor Michael Taylor. We will then have a presentation from our Associate Dean for Student Experience, Dr. Winklet Gallimore. We will have an, a presentation, which I will make, about the um, Faculty of Science and Technology requirements and the requirements by the university for a degree. We will also have presentations from Dr. Jasmine Lawrence. She will speak with us um, about the foundation courses and she will give you information on um, all that you need to get yourself started with our foundation courses, what to select, how to get cracking. And she's from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy. We'll have a presentation also from Dr. Helen Trotman Edwards. She is um, from the Faculty of Medical Sciences, and she will speak to those who are interested in later transferring to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. We have also with us Ms. Clement Henry from the Careers and Placement section, and she will um, also give us a presentation that will help to drive some of your discussions later today when you have your academic counseling. And then to wrap up, I will have a few housekeeping notes and how to get us started for the rest of the day. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our Dean, the um, our Dean for the Faculty of Science and Technology, Professor Michael Taylor. Thank you very much, Dr. James Williamson. Students, parents, family, friends, Everybody, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the orientation 2020 for the Faculty of Science and Technology. As you have heard, my name is Michael Taylor and I am the Dean for the Faculty of Science and Technology. I just want to take a very few minutes and the first thing I really want to say to you is congratulations. Congratulations, because in fact, you are at the start of your journey as a university student. Student, for some of you, it's you are the first in your family to attend the university, and that's a fantastic thing. For others of you, you are co completing a long tradition of, of your family being going to the university. But it doesn't matter, irrespective of what category you fall in, you must embrace this moment. You must be proud of the achievement of your that you are starting university, and you must take the congratulations that are being offered. In truth, this is a very challenging time in our in in in, in the history of the world, really, and in our country. And you could have decided that maybe not this year, given the challenges. But here you are, the start of your university journey. Congratulations. Let me then also say, however, welcome. Yes, I've welcomed you to the orientation, but I also want to welcome you to the University of the West Indies, your place to shine. No, you made a good decision coming to the University of the West Indies. The University of the West Indies is the number one ranked university in the Caribbean, according to the Times Higher Education, in the top 2% in Latin America, and in the top 4% in the world. Welcome to a world-class university. And then of course, welcome to the Faculty of Science and Technology. We consider, our tagline here is that we are the go-to place for science knowledge, research, and solutions. Certainly the go-to place in, in our country, in our region, and in for some, some aspects of our science in the entire world. If you made a good choice to come to the University of the West Indies, you certainly made a great choice in joining the Faculty of Science and Technology. Let me quickly just give you a little bit about the Faculty of Science and Technology. Here are some numbers that you may want to bear in mind. 
When you join us, you are joining 3,000 other students in our faculty. Not all of them new, but across all your groups, we have 3,000 other students. We have six departments in our faculty, chemistry, computing, geography and geology, life sciences, mathematics, and physics. And in addition to these departments, we have five centers and units biotechnology center center for marine sciences the natural products institute the mona institute for applied sciences and the earthquake unit there is a lot of science happening in this faculty but here's another number that you should bear in mind we have over 50 undergraduate programs and majors that's right over 50 undergraduate programs and majors these run the gamut from software engineering to geosciences to actuarial science, medical physics, food chemistry, marine sciences, and we even offer majors for the which are which are taught through basic medical sciences or the faculty of medical sciences in things like biochemistry and microbiology. What am I trying to say here? Simply this you may have had an idea of what you wanted to do or felt you wanted to do when you came into our faculty. But I'm challenging you to be open your mind and be very open to other things. You will be surprised as you go through our faculty that there, what you, the degree you end up with may not be the degree that you had come in to do because you simply didn't realize that we had so many offerings in on of undergraduate programs and majors. I, I, I implore you to take the time to read the handbook, go on our website and, and check out all the fantastic things that we have to offer. True, this year we are going to be, be offering things in a different mode, especially for this semester in an online mode, but it doesn't change the fact. We have a great set of offerings open your mind, figure out what you want to do, and go after it. One more thing about the faculty that I would like to tell you, and it is this. When you come into the Faculty of Science and Technology, this is the place that does world-leading science research. So on the screen are just a few of the things that we do research in and that we are known for worldwide. We are known for strong research in the marine sciences and in the environmental field, especially environmental monitoring. We are the leading um, science faculty in terms of climate change, and especially climate change as it impacts the small islands like the Caribbean. We, we do leading research in big data, cybersecurity, mathematical modeling, alternative energy, water, and the use of water resources, the development of natural products, biotechnology, food chemistry, and this is just a sampling of the areas in which we lead. You, as a new undergraduate student, have the opportunity to get involved in some of this research, whether through projects that you will be given to do, especially during your final year, or just by simply taking the, the time to find the group that is doing this research and telling them you are interested, you may become an undergraduate research intern. We are a place that does world-leading science research. And so remember, when, you are, when, you're, when your teachers, when you see their lecturers in your class, some of those lecturers are some of the same ones who are leading this kind of science research. Let me close then by saying, giving you just a few words of advice. How to ensure that you are going to have a true FST experience. FST being fulfilling, satisfying, and transformative experience. If I could leave you with six phrases, I think it would be this. One, find your groove quickly, especially in the online environment in which we will operate this semester. It may be easy to decide that, well, I will get around to that at a later point. Don't be don't take that attitude and quickly find your groove. This is university. It's demanding. Um, find your groove quickly. Two, 
ask, read, and ask again. Don't assume. A, you, a lot of information will be thrown at you. Some will come from, and they will come from multiple sources. We are all here to help you. If you don't understand something, ask. If you're in a lecture, lecture and you don't understand, ask. Read what the notes are given to you. Read the information. Don't assume. Just ask and make clear. Make it clear. So ask, read, and ask again. Don't assume. Thirdly, a very important piece of advice. Don't skip classes or let the work get ahead of you. You are going to be surprised how quickly the work how quickly the work ramps up and how much you actually have to do. Always keep abreast of your classes and the work. Don't skip them, even if you're tempted to say, I can lie down in my bed in this online environment a little longer and, and catch a class later. Take my advice. Don't skip classes or let the work get ahead of you. Four, know the name of your lecturers and let them know yours. It's very important. We are trying to build a transformative experience and, a, and in a sense, a family experience. When your lecturers know you and you know your lecturers, it helps considerably to make this a fulfilling, satisfying, and transformative experience. So know the name of your lecturers and let them know yours. Five, very important, everybody can get an A. What will it depend on? Your hard work, your determination, your putting in the work. Everybody can get an A. And lastly, I would say enjoy the experience. For this particular year group, it's going to be a little different experience because you are starting in an online environment. Notwithstanding, make sure you take the time to enjoy the experience. Remember, there are lots of clubs and, and, and to get involved with. And even though they will be this semester offered online, don't just focus on your work alone. Get, make some time to get involved in these clubs. And so, you, and so you approximate, approximate the entire university experience. But of course, remember the work gets priority. If you follow these six tips, you will have a true FST experience, fulfilling, satisfying, and transformative. So let me end then by saying thank you and welcome again. Remember this website as it certainly will have a lot of the information that you will need to know. This is the Faculty of Science and Technology, the place to go for science, science knowledge, science research, science solutions. Happy to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Professor Taylor. That is quite the encouragement. And folks, you don't need a better pep talk than that. In fact, the Guild has a way of, um, the Guild Council for the Faculty of Science and Technology, their new sort of slogan, they've been calling the faculty, the faculty of greatness. So for all of what Professor um, Taylor has just told you, I think you can see yourself in that faculty of greatness and see yourself making a mark once you follow all of his guidelines and you must follow them to a T, I'm sure that it will bring, bring you some success. Next, we have a presentation from our Associate Dean for Student Experience, and this will be done by um, Dr. Winklet Gallimore. Dr. Gallimore will introduce herself to you and she will jump right into her presentation. And I'm sure that you will find everything she has to say extremely useful. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome new students. Thank you for choosing to be in the Faculty of Science and Technology. And indeed it is the Faculty of Greatness. Uh, could I have the presentation, please? Thanks. So as Prof Taylor says, it is the place to go for science and we want you to have an amazing FST experience. And in the enjoying of the experience, we want to mention some things that would be of importance to you. First off, 
you need to check the FST website. There's a lot of good, useful information on the website. Check it out. It will be of benefit and value to you. So ensure that you have the FST website at easy access. Um, we also have internship opportunities. Of course, we know we're in a different environment, you know, but there in the past we have had have had entities like Huawei that where people have done internships. So there are amazing opportunities. Reach out and you will be able to facilitate, be facilitated in that regard. We spoke about, the Dean spoke about becoming a member of an FST club or society. The students, the student body, they're working hard to ensure that this is a virtually amazing experience. And so ensure that you sign up to be a part of a club or society. We also want to tell you, you can get a scholarship why pay for the ex your education yourself? You can get a scholarship once the GPA is at a good level. Of course, you know, persons will tell you that, you know, first year doesn't really matter. But the truth of the matter is, if you want a scholarship, you need to have a good GPA. And so it means you need to hit the ground running as soon as you start. Let's get it going. All right. Um, we have awards that we offer to students here in the faculty. Chemistry, computing, geography, geology, life sciences, math and physics, you know that these are our departments and we are more than happy to give out awards to those who are deserving of it. And so why not you to be an awesome opportunity? Also, we want to let you know that you can order an FSC shirt or a personalized jersey and I understand masks are also in the, in the offing um, on the, so, you, so that is through the Guild of um, Undergrad Students. And so you can figure that out when they give you the requisite information, then you can ensure to represent in an FST t-shirt. Uh, we want to also let you know that we have a Dean's Honor Roll or commendation list. So it means that as long as you do the work, you will be appropriately acknowledged and recognized. And it is a prestigious list to find yourself on. And so, as I said, hit the ground running. Uh, well, in terms of our other types of activities, you know, the CB5K is probably not going to happen this year, but listen out for other times and other activities that we'll have together as a team. We have the first year experience program, which is a program that's university wide. So when you get that notification, sign up for the FST experience, of the first year experience. We have student success coaches within the Faculty of Science and Technology that can um, help you on this journey. Uh, we will have motivational sessions. The FST Guild will have FST week activities. It's usually in semester two. Uh, we have the Honor Society. Currently, it's chemistry and physics, but we are sure that the other departments are going to log on so that you can have be, be honored in the Honor Society. Of course, you know that's GPA related, so it's all about getting in that work in order to get that recognition. All right. We will also have volunteering opportunities, uh, maybe a little bit different this year. And um, the study skills workshop that's facilitated through the faculty office. And the last thing I have here is walking the track with Team FST. In the past, we have teamed up with the Jamaica Cancer Society for Relay for Life. You know, you all need to have a social conscience. And the truth also is that here in the Faculty of Science and Technology, we are doing a lot of research related to cancer. And we want to get rid of that scourge of cancer. And so this is part of what we're doing to team up with the Jamaica Cancer Society for that. There are a couple other things that I'm excited about that I want to tell you about in terms of uh, program. This is the holistic development program. Now, guys, we just spoke about being up academically, but it's always wonderful and great to have a high IQ. But in order to get ahead in life, you need to have a high EQ. That's emotional quotient. You need to be emotionally intelligent. You need to be self-aware as well as to be aware of persons around you and things around you and people. You cannot get ahead in life without people. And so, you know, we want to have that holistic development happening in your spiritually, socially, physically, emotionally, mentally. All of the alleys we want to have in line in order for you to develop as a whole individual. And so you can sign up for this on the faculty website. And we will give you more details as time goes by. The other thing that I'm excited about is the first gen FST. 
So we know that there are some of you, you are your pioneers, the pioneers in your family. You are the first in your family to actually enter a tertiary institution, not your parents, not your grandparents. And so you're a pioneer. And there's a great joy in being a pioneer, but there also can be great, great trepidation and fear in being that pioneer. And so we want to support you in this regard. So we will give you access to different resources. We also will have interviews from persons who have been first in their family and they made it through successfully. And so there are lots of things you can glean from persons who've been where you want to be in life. All right, and so that is a first gen program. You also can sign up for that on our faculty's website. We also want to let you know, we spoke earlier about our student success coaches. You can also on the website, sign up for that level of support. It could be a situation where you just want to, to get some general advice from an individual. So you just fill out the form and some one of our FST student success coaches will get in touch with you and will be able to answer your questions and help you. Our job is to help you through this journey. This is an amazing opportunity to learn and to change and to grow, guys. And I really want to encourage you to take advantage of everything that you have available to you. Also want to mention about our legacy project 2020, 2021. It's going to be an amazing year. And so we also, there's a beautification project that we want to be involved with and we want you to be involved with too. You know, you want to be able to leave your stamp and leave your mark on the university um, campus and in the Faculty of Science and Technology. And so we really want to um, encourage you in that regard. And the also in terms of entrepreneurial skills, we, we've had in the past FSC entrepreneurs being displayed on the spine. You know, we have makeup artists. So yes, you're good at science, but you're also good at many other things. You know, you could be an artist, you could be a photographer, you know, and you could turn that into an entrepreneurial activity, into a business of some sort. And so we want you to, to be thinking holistically in terms of your development and your growth. And finally, I'm just giving a couple of nuggets of advice. And I'm not going to go through them all, but the first one there is network. That means that you're going to have to talk to people that you never usually talk to, people from different cultures, different backgrounds. You are able in an online space to even do that type of networking, probably even on a higher level. And so we encourage you to talk to somebody from St. Vincent, talk to somebody from the Bahamas, from Barbados. You know, don't just stay with your own Jamaican persons and that type of thing, or even your own school. You know, yes, we know we, we have this, this tree called the KC tree. Well, I guess it can, it's going to be virtual this year, you know, and we have Calabar this and, you know, we have, so we've come from different schools, but my encouragement to you is get to know persons who you, who are dumb, who never went to your school, you know, so that you can have a more, you can learn and grow and change. The second thing I want to say is dream big. So this, you're going to go on a journey. It's going to take you three or four years, hopefully, guys, as long as you keep it together, you know, going to take you three or four years. But after you finish this degree, continue to dream. While you're doing this degree, dream of other things that you want to accomplish in life. Okay, there's so much, there's so much joy to be obtained from life. And then I'm gonna go to the middle there, write down your goals. If you have goals, you need to have goals. Write them down. It is said that is a, there's a greater probability of you accomplishing them if you actually write them down. Heading to the bottom, take action even when it's scary. And I want to congratulate you for deciding to still come to university in spite of all of the fears that there may be, financial challenges or other challenges that you may face. Just I congratulate you on taking action. And there are going to be many new moments, many scary moments. Take action no matter what. And then the last one is have a powerful and inspiring why. You need to know why you're here. And some things you will discover as you go along. Just be open to that process of discovery. And finally, at the bottom, there is our WhatsApp contact. And we welcome you again to the Faculty of Greatness. And you are going to have an amazing year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gallimore. Listen, you have gotten so far two excellent 
excellent presentations about how to get yourself situated in university, essentially how to hit the ground running. I'm going to provide you with some additional details now as to how you're going to organize your academics and how you should progress from this point onwards towards graduation. Can you put up the presentation for me? Thank you. So once again, welcome to the Faculty of Greatness. And every time I say that, you should stomp and applause and cheer because this is indeed your time. So firstly, let me introduce you to the faculty very quickly. We have our Dean, who, whom you've met. We have several heads of department. We have um, Dr. Donovan Campbell from the G Department of Geography and Geology, Life Sciences, um, Dr. Dwight Robinson. We have Dr. Nagarani Panakala from Mathematics and Dr. Tanisha Stevenson from Physics. We also have Dr. Donna Minot Cates from the Department of Chemistry. And we have Dr. Mansing from the Department of Computing. And last but by no means least are our colleagues from the biochemistry section headed by Dr. Lisa Lindo. Biochemistry is genetically linked to our faculty even though they reside in the Faculty of Medical Sciences. The faculty is supported, the dean is supported by the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Matters, uh, which is me. Um, of course, you've met Dr. Um, Winklet Gallimore and we have another um, our graduate student matters, which is Dr. Marcia Roy, and external engagement, which is um, Dr. Andre Coy. Next slide, please. So some basic, basic information, um, because this will form the basis of some of our conversation this morning. A major is a combination of several courses within a department or within a discipline, a minor, is a small combination of courses within the department. Credits, these are the points awarded to each course. And so far, for those of you who have been reading the handbook and attempting to register, you would see, for example, numbers like two and three and four, six or even eight credits. A course consists of your lectures, your labs, your tutorials, field classes, seminars, and so on. The semester consists of 13 weeks. We have two semesters per academic year. And for this year of non-normal, I would like to say, we um, our summer semester will be fully functioning as um, you could describe it as semester three. The level which you will hear us talk about, we're gonna talk about level zero and level one and level two and level three, speaks to your year of study. So preliminary level is level zero, and it does not go towards your degree, but rather towards matriculating or qualifying for level one. This is usually for those persons who don't have CAPE, only have one unit of CAPE, rather than this particular situation where we are, um, we've allowed entry with persons who are awaiting that second unit. We're not talking about those persons. We're talking about the people who have a single unit of CAPE, they've not registered for a second one, or persons who just have CSEC courses, or CSEC subjects rather. Level one, these are courses that begin with the number one. For example, BIOL 1017, and these, you must have two units of CAPE, or as I described before, the situation, the COVID-19 situation, as I like to call it. And so we move on to level two. The courses at this level begin with a two, for example, GEOL 2202, and you must satisfy level one prerequisites in order to study at um, for level two courses in, in most instances. There might be one or two courses, I think, in the Department of Physics where there is a course that is a level two course that doesn't require a prerequisite. Level three courses, these are courses that begin with the number three. For example, Comp 3901, you must satisfy level one prerequisites, level two prerequisites, sorry, to be able to study um, these level three courses. This is what happens when you copy and paste. So that should read level two courses are prerequisites for your level three study. 
Next slide, please. All right, so your GPA or grade point average, this is how your progress in the university will be measured. This is very, very important as this is a metric by which you are judged. This is how you matriculate and later on, this is how you get into graduate school anywhere in the world. This is the measurement for universities. You are responsible for your GPA by virtue of your own performance. Your GPA is lowered when you fail a course. However, we are not going to dwell on the fail. We want to increase your GPA by, uh, by you working harder and getting better scores. If you look at the table that I have there, you will see that if you score between 90 and 100, you get an A plus and your GPA is 4.3. And yes, it is attainable. There are many students with 4.3 GPA and there are many rewards as Dr. Um, Gallimore indicated before, the Dean's Honor Roll. We also have um, Honor Societies in, in different departments. Now highlighted there is 50. The university pass mark is 50. Do not by any means aim for 50 because we have some failed designations which are grades below 50 and we don't want you to have that if you look as well you will see that the gpa at 50 to 54 is two and you are required to maintain a gpa of two and above next slide please so your gpa also impacts your degree it impacts the class of the degree that you will get. For example, a GPA of 3.6 to 4.3 gives you a first class honors. And trust me, everybody can get a first class honors. You need to just work towards it. It's not that the university have a few of them putting up there and there's a big competition to get it. As the Dean said, everybody can get an A. You just have to work hard enough for it. So you must maintain a GPA above two at all times. You cannot graduate with a GPA lower than two. Let me repeat, you cannot graduate with a GPA lower than two. Level zero and level one credits do not contribute to the class of your degree. However, you need to be able to apply for scholarships and um, obtain um, the commendations and be able to be on the Dean's list or the Dean's Honor Roll as it is now called. So you need to work very hard on those. Some sources of information, you've already been um, accessing these, the faculty website, the undergraduate registration and information guide, registration booklet, undergraduate handbook, departmental offices, well, through their telephone and um, their, through their, through their telephones and their web pages, your academic advisors who you'll meet today, the Dean's Office, which is where we are, and I'll introduce you to a few of our um, very helpful staff in a moment. Uh, we have brochures in our various departments. Some of those might be online now. Notice boards, I know some, some of these are now um, virtual. And of course, the faculty has a Facebook page to keep you updated on the greatness that occurs from our faculty and from our alumni. So the faculty office has in, in it, you've met two of us already, um, Dr. Winkler Gallimore and myself. We have an undergraduate coordinator. This is Mrs. Nadine McEwan. We have Ms. Novian Davy. She is a research assistant. And our customer service rep is Mr. Omar Holness. When you call the office, you will get one of these persons. Um, if, they, if they'll come quickly, I will show you their faces so you will see them and you will meet them later on, um, possibly in our Zoom link. So here they are, my stellar team in the faculty welcome. office. Welcome, welcome. Right, so these are the persons you will hear when you phone us and they will be ready and willing and able to assist you. And um, of course, you will get in touch with me as well. And don't fear, if you send me an email, I will answer. It may take a little while, maybe about 24 to 48 hours, depending on what's happening. But we do communicate with you and we run Robin as much as possible to get you um, information. So if you're in doubt about anything, contact us. Departmental resources, you will meet all of those persons today. Um, other sources of information, your undergraduate coordinators, you'll meet some of them. 
the health center, um, Office of Student Financing, Student Admin Services, which is SAS. You've already been interacting with SAS. Placement and Careers, who you'll have a presentation from shortly, and the Offices of Student Services and Development. And of course, you will interact throughout your uni university life with the registry, uh, um, information systems, admissions, the International Students Office, and examination section. You will meet many of these people today. The session after this at 10 o'clock, you will meet your head, of your head of department. You will also meet your academic advisors and lecturers. They will give you academic counseling. And we have the names of some of our um, undergraduate coordinators. But time will not permit me to go through them, but I am almost certain before the week is out, you will meet one of these persons, if not all of them. Next slide, please. All right, so university requirements, very quickly. You need a minimum of 93 credits to graduate. This may differ for some majors or some options in some departments, and you will hear more about this in your breakout session. You must complete three foundation courses, and Dr. Lawrence is here to give you that information. You must have a GPA of two or greater to graduate. If your GPA is less than two at the end of any single semester, you will be given a warning letter. Usually people work harder when they get the warning letter, but it would be better if you don't get one at all. So try to work hard, keep pace with the work. If your GPA is less than two, for two consecutive semesters, you will then be asked to withdraw. We do not want either of these two situations, so we encourage you to work hard. If you start to experience difficulties, book a meeting with me, book a meeting with your academic advisor, book a meeting with your undergraduate coordinator in your department and let's talk let's get you on track sooner rather than later so in terms of credit requirements let's just work this out level one and i'll break this out for you in a little bit level one you have um, a minimum of 24 credits level two and three together a minimum of 60 credits your foundation courses you need nine credits of those and it gives you a total of 93, which is the minimum number of credits that um, is required for graduation. Some persons will end up with more credits, for example, students doing OSH, students doing um, actuarial science, and, um, and a few other courses, programs rather, within the faculty. So of course, you need to make sure that you are checking and that we have, um, we have a degree plan so we need for you to utilize this degree plan. We will try to put that, um, send that out in an email to everyone before the week is out. So you can start to chart your entire course. Next slide, please. You're, for, um, for FST requirements, you are required to complete a minimum of 24 credits, as I said before, um, for level one. However, 18 of these credits must be from the Faculty of Science and Technology. 18 of these credits must be from the Faculty of Science and Technology. These credits does not include your foundation courses. You cannot put foundation courses in the counting for um, your 24 level one credits because these are separate. These are nine university credits and they are required for graduation. And they, even though they start with the number one, they are separate and apart from this 24 credit requirement for level one. You must satisfy at least one major, which means you must be engaged in one discipline, the major in one discipline in the faculty before you start venturing out for other majors or minors um, in the university or even within the faculty. And I must point out at this juncture that some persons may want to do um, a double major, whether two majors in this faculty or a major here and a major somewhere else in the university. Please bear in mind that the course load for these programs will prevent you from completing everything within one, um, one academic year. Just bear with me a moment. Something has come up on my screen and I'm not able to see anything.
Okay. Um, how many credits can you do? So for um, <clears throat> for CSEC, persons with CSEC passes, you're going to be doing prelim. You must do prelim because prelim is the only gateway towards level one, which is where you actually begin your degree study. You need a minimum of 24 preliminary credits to move on to level one. This will essentially drive you towards a four-year degree. And this is termed lower level matriculation because you're going to start at level zero, then level one, then level two, then level three, four years. There's no, um, there's no way around this. This is what must be done. And if you've been offered to study at prelim first, you need to take those prelim courses and pass them before you can move up the level. One CAPE or A-level pass, normally 12 level one credits plus 12 preliminary credits. So we're fleshing this out now. So for the persons who have only one CAPE, you, know, you will need 12 level one credits so you can take the credits, you can take courses in the discipline for which you have that CAPE. For example, if you have computer science or if you have chemistry as your single CAPE subject, you can take level one courses in computing, you can take level one courses in chemistry, if chemistry is a subject you have, but you must do preliminary subjects or preliminary courses in the second discipline, in any second discipline that will assist you in obtaining your degree. Um, can you click down so we have um, everything on the screen? I think I'm now at two or more CAPE subjects. If you have two or more CAPE level pa a or A-level passes, normally you can do 24 level one credits. So if you have from two disciplines, for example, biology and chemistry, you should be able to take biology at level one and chemistry at level, level one. You can take a third discipline because you can take up to 36 level one credits. And this will allow you to transition into various areas. Now, um, some persons might choose, even though they have two CAPE subjects, maybe they, want, um, they wanted to do biology, but they didn't get it at CAPE, but they have math and they have physics. You can go ahead and study preliminary biology to be able to move into level one biology, but you must have the prerequisites, which is your CAPE, discipline to be able to do the discipline of your choice okay there's no um there's no getting around it and lastly repeating a course which you have already passed is not allowed so we would prefer for you to pass everything with good scores and then just move on to the next level so if you do prelim and you've passed that prelim course that's it just let's move on to the next level and try to complete our degree in good time Next slide, please. Number of credits. For full-time, you need 15 credits per semester and at least one foundation course per academic year. You're gonna hear how these um, foundation courses are organized because um, there are some intricacies. So in full, um, for full-time, for one academic year, you can take 33 credits and that would include a foundation course. So 15 credits per semester plus a foundation course. Part-time, if you're a part-time student and in the Faculty of Science and Technology, and I believe throughout the university, part-time really for us does not mean that you come to classes in the evening. What it means is that you're carrying a certain number of credits. And in this particular case, you're carrying 12 credits per semester and you're allowed a foundation course within that. So you would be doing 27 credits for the academic year. So once you register for any number of credits, 27 or less, you are regarded as part-time and there's a separate billing within the university system for that. Now, um, it, it is useful to note that students who are on scholarship or those who live on hall may be required to register for full-time regardless of the number of credits you're carrying. So it is very, very important to check on this and it is very, very important to check your, your funders to ensure that you are within the requirements of their funding. We're coming close to the end. 
So in terms of course registration, general entry requirements, and I'm not gonna spend any time on this slide because your breakout sessions will go through this with you. So we already know what is required for university. We know that this year we have arranged for you if you are if you've registered and 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 you've taken your second unit of cape and are awaiting results that you have a firm offer and you can advance into level one when you get to your various department um, discussions they will speak with you further about how and what to register for so we're not going to spend too much time on that so how do you communicate with the faculty and yes this is a slide that tells you how to send us email, okay? We need for you to activate your UWI email. Once you are registered, you can communicate with MITS and have them arrange or, or um, activate rather your, your UWI email. You can choose to copy your um, secondary email because right now um, your UE email for UE purposes is your primary email and you can copy your secondary email um, in your correspondence to us and we will reply all and all of you will get your response. Now, in the subject line for your email, we would like for you to address for us the issue, the topic, the problem, the situation, the scenario, or you can simply put your name and ID number in that slot, in the slot for subject, okay? Ensure you provide salutation, say hello to whoever you're writing to, okay? I like people to say hello because then I respond and I say hello back. And even if you don't say hello, I will say hello back, but we need to know who you're addressing and um, what information you'd like to convey. State clearly um, the issue or the problem or situation or the query that you are, um, you're about. Ensure that your ID number is in the body of the email if you haven't put it as a subject. Provide an ending with some kind of contact number or alternative way of contacting you other than email because the matter might be urgent and we might need to call you for some clarification or to give you an update very quickly rather than to wait on an email. And there are some email um, addresses there that you can contact us on as well as phone numbers. And um, I'm sure one of, one of my abled um, colleagues here in the faculty office will type those out in the chat for you so that you can communicate with us. Already we've been getting a lot of email from you, so we already know you are familiar with contacting us, um, but we need to ensure that you give us all the information so that we are able to respond to your query within good time. So um, this is some quick housekeeping matters for orientation activities today. Um, so you're in the main session, it started at nine, so if you joined us a little late, it's being recorded and you can go back and um, view the presentations. Um, we have more presentations to come, so don't sign off just yet. At 10 o'clock, you will join um, your departmental discussion groups. I think it might be a little bit later than 10 since we, we had a little late start. But um, needless to say, right after the main session, you will jump right into the sessions for your departments. And we're asking you to go to the department for your major first. So once, once you select or decide what your possible major will be, go to that conversation first, and then you can view the recordings of everything else after. Um, watch the video presentations of all the departments or courses or programs that you're interested in first before advancing to academic counseling, which will start little, a little later on in the day. We should start those at one o'clock. And today, academic counseling is for names A through L. Um, tomorrow, there's no main session. We will just jump right into the um, academic counseling for persons with surnames beginning M to Z. And I think that is the end of my presentation. So thank you for making the University of the West Indies your place to shine. We have a presentation next, um, hang on. Uh, our next presentation is from our colleague in, I think I'm missing out now. We're gonna have a presentation on our foundation courses, I'm sorry. And this will be done by Dr. Jasmine Lawrence. 
So please give her your undivided attention. Thank you very much. Welcome, Dr. Lawrence. Thank you very much, Dr. James Williamson. And I would like to add my welcome to all students who are online now and those who will see the presentations later on. I'm Jasmine Lawrence from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. And I will be talking about the foundation writing courses. I will not be able to say a lot about your other foundation courses, except to say that for the other foundation courses that you will do, you can actually exchange them with an elective. For example, a language, a modern language elective, but for the foundation writing courses, they are compulsory. They can't be changed out for any other course. And so I'll be talking about Found 1014, Critical Reading and Writing in Science and Technology and the Medical Sciences, which is the course I coordinate. And I will say a little bit about Found 1019, Critical Reading and Writing in the Disciplines. I like to start with quotations, and because it is a writing course, um, here's the quotation that I'd like to share by Jean Jacques Rousseau. He says, however great a man's natural talent may be, the process of writing cannot be learned all at once. And I'd like you to bear that in mind as we go through the presentation and as you go through your courses in the, depart in the uh, department. Next slide. We like to start by introducing you to who the distinctive UA graduate is, because this is somebody that we are trying to create within the foundation writing courses. So critical and creative thinking, effective communicator with good interpersonal skills. COVID has led us into an environment where IT skills and the ability to, to be literate in how we receive information is becoming very, very important. And we would like in the end to have a graduate who is guided by strong ethical values, somebody who is culturally aware, somebody who is globally aware and well-grounded in regional Caribbean identity. We teach academic writing using academic language. And when you get into your courses, all right, when you get into your classes, you will learn much more about academic language, which some of our students think is a different language from what they learned, you know, in CSEC and CAPE and so on. I'd like to point out that this is a writing course. A lot of students confuse our courses with English, but we're actually doing writing. We're trying to build your academic language proficiency. And we work in partnership with your faculty. We work in partnership with the departments in your faculty to ensure that the writing that you do at this level is suitable for the kind of writing that you will do even post academia. So we introduce you to the genres of writing that you will use in the Faculty of Science and Technology. We don't go in depth by any means. We leave that to your second and third level courses. So let me talk a little bit about Found 1014, which is a three credit course. And in order to take Found 1014, you must be a science and technology or a medical science student. You must have a grade one or two in Cape Communication Studies or uh, CSEC English grade one or a level one pass in the English language proficiency test. Uh, Found, I'm going to tell you a little bit as well about Found 1019, which is a six credit course. And this is where the complexity that 
Dr. Uh, James Williamson mentioned comes in because outside of your 24 credits, you will do your foundation writing course and Fountain 14 is a three credit course. However, if you fail the English language proficiency test or if you do not have the prerequisite, then you will register for Fountain 19, which is a six credit course. And if you add up your credits, 24 plus the other foundation course that you will do, whether you choose to do an elective or to do the specific alternative foundation course, then that will take you up to 20, up to 30 credits. If you have to do Fountain 19, this is where 33 credits comes in because Fountain 19 is a six credit year long course. So you start in semester one and you carry over this six credit year long course into semester two. So if you haven't sat the English language proficiency test, you would not register for phone 1019. You will register to sit the test to see if you can actually get into the three credit phone 1014 instead. Let's talk a little bit about semester one in phone 1014. So semester one is specifically for students who are registered to do radiography, nursing, pharmacy, physiotherapy. And so that is one of the reasons why everybody has to request an override. So I have received emails from students requesting overrides and wondering why they're not getting their overrides and so on. We have to prioritize students in nursing, pharmacy, physiotherapy, radiography this semester. However, other students are likely to get in and I have given some overrides to other students who are first year students because we give those on a first come first served basis guided by the registration levels in radiography, nursing, and so on. So some first year students who need to graduate will um, also be accepted. Medical science students who can't do the course in semester two, second year students who need the course as a prerequisite for second semester. When you register, if you have to request an override, can you please send, put a little message in the comment box with your email and your ID number so that I can send you a response, especially if I have to decline your override request. Now, there are some students I'm noticing who have received override requests. However, they've exceeded maximum credit hours. Now, if you exceed your maximum credit hours and you notice that as a message when you go on to check your registration, please contact your faculty office immediately. They are the only ones who can give you credit overrides. So don't languish on SAS attempting to get an override, which you have already been granted from the side of my department, okay? So when you register, please put a little note in the comment box with your um, ID number, your email, so that I can respond to you about um, why you have not gotten the override. Next slide. In semester two, all first year students in science and technology, medical sciences, are expected to register for Fountain 14. That is, of course, accepting those students who I will allow to do the course in this semester, all right? Other exceptions include students who do the course in semester one, but for various reasons you fail or, you know, you would like to get it out of the way in your first year. Another option for first-year students sometimes is the summer session, 
Okay, so those are options. But we like when students do the foundation writing course in the first year of your program. You do not want to carry a course that some students consider to, to be heavy on reading and writing into second year. Okay. Um, can I see the next slide, please? So classes begin for Fountain 14, Fountain 19 on September 14th. We expect to put up information on your course site that is on Orvieli about orientation matters and so on for the course next week. That is starting September 7th, but classes and lectures will begin next on September 14th. You are required to attend one lecture and one two-hour seminar each week. And so when you are registering, you are registering for a lecture which is linked to a seminar. The seminars are two hours. So for some students who I have declined, it's because you're registering for two lectures. The system shouldn't allow it, but things happen. And so I will decline you. And many students who have found themselves in that position subsequently register and they link both seminar and lecture, in which case you are granted the override. Assessment for Fountain 14 is strictly by coursework. And so I'd like to reiterate Professor Taylor's advice that you do not miss any of your classes. It is very important for you to be in the lecture. It's very important for you to be in the seminar, especially because of the interactive nature of our seminars. We take attendance. Even though seminars will be online, we will be taking attendance. And there is a, a grade for participation, for attendance, and so on in your seminar. And all of this will be explained in your first class. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now, in the first week of the semester, and I am suspecting that this is going to be next week into the week of September 14, the library will advertise their UA link sessions. As first year students, it's very important for you to understand how to navigate the systems in the library. And these sessions are mandatory for students who are registered in Phone 1014 in both semesters one and two. The sessions are held through the library. There is an online sign up sheet, and the relevant information will be posted on Phone 1014's course site on Orvieli. Please do not postpone your writing course, your foundation writing course, for reasons I've you know, hinted at earlier. Um, as you progress in your university life, the courses get progressively more difficult. Level two courses are more difficult than level one courses, more challenging as you get into level three, especially when you have to write your major papers and so on. So you don't want to leave it until second or third year. Also, there are courses in second and third year. For example, students who are doing engineering and other students who are doing other courses, which your faculty will tell you about, you will need Phone 1014 as a prerequisite. You certainly don't want to leave this course until summer school of the year before you graduate. And I think you can work out all the reasons why. Okay, so this is a course that you should do early. And I want to say something there about the perception of Fountain 14, which is one of the reasons why students tend to delay and delay as long as they can get away with it. Over the past two years, 
um, we have responded to students' complaints and comments about Fountain 14, affectionately called CRIT. And we have put in a number of different changes, which has seen our pass rate lingering in the 90 and above percent. Okay? So if anybody tells you that we have a high failure rate, do not listen to them. Over the past two years, the pass rate in Fountain 1014 has been over 90%. Okay, so don't listen to the naysayers. Next slide. The coordinators I've indicated are myself and my office hours are on that slide Mondays and Wednesdays 12 to 1 for Fountain 14 students and online um, consultations will be offered during this semester. I've also indicated my email address. You can send me an email at any time, but the caveat expressed by others that you should expect a response, um, say within 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes I respond if I'm online immediately, but the rule of thumb is 24 to 48 hours for a response. I, I have also included the coordinator for Fountain 19, which is a year long course. Her name is Miss Dijon Lingo. Her office hours Tuesdays 12 to 3, Wednesdays 4 to 6. And her email address has also been included on the slide. And I believe she will also be doing online. Uh, consultations during this semester. In the final slide, I'd like to leave you with a quote. Remember, we started out by saying writing is a process. You fail only if you stop writing. And so we know the perception of writing and all that goes with it. However, I'm going to ask you to not skip classes, so, you know, to reiterate what your dean said, what Dean Taylor said, don't skip classes, know your lecturer's names, everyone can get an A. As I indicated, our pass rates have trended up. We're now in the 90 plus percent and the quality of the passes have been getting much better as well as students have been striving to get A's in this course that is intended to help you become the ideal UA graduate, and to support all your lecturers in the Faculty of Greatness. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. Any questions you have can be sent to my email address, which is in the slide. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Lawrence. go back to Dr. James Williamson. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Lawrence. As always, um, very, very informative and extremely useful and some very good tips there. Those tips you can carry over into all of your courses. And just to follow up very quickly from something Dr. Lawrence um, indicated, there are two other foundation courses. One is Law, Governance and Society. That's found 1301. And there is Caribbean Civilization, which is Phone 1101. Both of these um, are required for graduation. However, as she indicated, you can exchange one of them for a foreign language, a modern language, which also includes Haitian Creole and um, Chinese. You cannot, however, and please listen carefully, you cannot exchange any of these for sign language. Sign language is not. Um, not a modern language that is part of this swap if you're exchanging your foundation course for a language and if you are exchanging your foundation course for a language right now you cannot take that language as a major or minor but rather just as a foundation okay um without further ado i am going to invite um the presentation 
for um, Dr. Trotman Edwards. The Faculty of Medical Sciences is also hosting their, um, their orientation this week. And I am incredibly grateful that Dr. Trotman Edwards was able to assist us this morning. Dean for teaching. Good morning. I am Dr. Helen Fortman Edwards. I am the Deputy Dean for Teaching and Learning in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, and I'm also the MBBS Program Director. I would like to first start by welcoming you to the UWE Mona campus. Congratulations on your achievements. The fact that you are here attests to your resilience during these unprecedented times of COVID-19. Some of you may be interested in ultimately entering the MBBS DDS program. So I'm here just to give some general information about admission criteria for entry into the program. Now, entry into the MBBS and DDS program is highly competitive and having achieved the minimum requirements is not a guarantee of acceptance. Applicants must be at least 18 years old by December 31st of the year of entry. Qualification for entry into these programs requires that applicants fulfill the general university regulations concerning matriculation and in addition, the specific requirements of the faculty. Now let us start with the academic requirements. Applicants must have a minimum of five CSEC or CXC subjects, general proficiency grades one to three, and or GCO levels grades A to C in English language, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and physics. For applicants coming straight out of high school, we look at the CAPE or the GCE A-level examination results. A candidate must have passes in three two-unit CAPE or three A-level subjects according to the following schemes. A candidate may do chemistry, biology or zoology, and either physics or math. Or a candidate may do chemistry, biology or zoology, and any other CAPE or A-level subject in addition to having CSEC or O-level physics. Please note that chemistry and biology or zoology is a must at the advanced level. If you are not doing physics at the advanced level, you must have CSEC or O-level physics. If an applicant wishes to transfer from the Faculty of Science and Technology after completion of the preliminary or level one courses of the program, the applicant must have a minimum grade of B in chemistry, biology, and any other year long course. This includes psychology, or the applicant may choose to do microbiology in one semester along with biochemistry in the other, and this can be accepted as a year-long option. If the third subject is not physics, the applicant must have CSEC or GCE or level physics. Students may also opt to apply for admission into the MBBS DDS program after completion of a first degree in natural or pure sciences 
from the Faculty of Science and Technology. Students must have a minimum of a lower second class honors and the degree must involve biology and chemistry courses. A degree in information technology, computer science and actuarial science is not accepted. Students with higher degrees may also apply for entry into the MBBS DDS program. Students who may have a master's or PhD in the basic sciences, example, biology, physics, biochemistry, pharmacology, pathology, microbiology, forensic science, and occupational health may apply for entry. The faculty will not accept masters in allied health or the masters in public health as an entry criterion. In addition to the academic requirements discussed before, there are also some non-academic considerations that the admission committee will look at. All candidates are required to submit a short autobiographic sketch outlining the reasons for their career choice. They must also produce evidence of their involvement in relevant extracurricular, co-curricular activities, socially oriented projects, and voluntary community service in the year prior to their application. Students who wish to apply to transfer from the Faculty of Science and Technology to the MBBS DDS program must submit an application online through the admission section. The deadline for applying is March 31st. I know a lot of you may be wondering how we decide which candidates gain admission into the program. We use an academic scoring system and there's a maximum of 30 points possible if we are looking at your CAPE results, we look at both units one and two. And depending on the grade that you get, there is an equivalent amount of points associated with that grade. So as you can see, grade one, you get an equivalent five points, grade two, four points, and down to grade five, where you will get one point. So if you got ones in all three of your CAPE subjects, both in unit one and unit two, and remember we use the chemistry, biology or zoology and one other course. Then if you got ones in all your courses in both units, you would get a maximum score of 30. If you are transferring from the Faculty of Science and Technology, you can get a maximum of 30 points from both semesters from your three courses. A grade A will give you an equivalent of five points, a grade B, four, and a grade C, three points. For students who are transferring after level one, we would use the best grades between your CAPE and your level one so that you will yield the best possible score. However, be aware, if we choose to use your CAPE grades for a particular course, we will use both CAPE 1 and CAPE 2. For applicants with first degrees, a first class honors will be awarded 30 points. For other class of degrees, points are awarded based on the GPA. For applicants with higher degrees, a total of four points is added to the score the candidate would have had from their first degree once it does not exceed a total of 30 points. So these applicants would have had a score based on their first degree. If they then go on to do a higher degree, a total of four is added once it does not exceed 30 points. Please note that once you have attained a first degree, 
we do not look at your CAPE scores. Your first degree would be looked at, and then if you do a higher degree, then we add points to whatever your score would be from your first degree. Applicants are ranked by their total score. A maximum of 280 applicants are admitted to the program each year. No applicant with a score less than 24 will be considered. However, due to the competitiveness of gaining entry, Applicants with a score of less than 26 are unlikely to gain entry. For the award of the government-sponsored spaces, students are ranked based on their academic scores. There are approximately 45 spaces available each year, and usually these are awarded to students with a score of 30. Sometimes, Depending on the quality of the applicant pool for a given year, students with a score of 29 may be awarded a place. I hope that I have been able to address most of the concerns and questions you may have. However, if you have a question that I have not addressed, you may contact us at medsci at uvimona.edu.jm. Thank you. I would want to um, take the opportunity to thank Dr. Trotman Edwards for making that presentation for us. Um, I know how stretched it would have been for her to be with us today and be elsewhere all at the same time. So I do hope for those of you who are interested in transferring to medicine, that this information was very, very useful. At some point, we will try to index um, the various presentations um, so that you will be able to connect directly into the one that you need to, to hear. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna ask our colleague from the Careers and Placement Center to come and speak with you for a few minutes. Her name is Ms. Clement Henry. Welcome, Ms. Henry. And um, I'm sure she has quite a bit of very, very good information for you. Thank you, Dr. Williamson. Good morning, first years. And again, let me say welcome to the University of the West Indies Mona Campus. The Office of Placement and Career Services is here to assist you as you transition through university and also as you make the transition from university into the world of work. We do so through our career development programs, which are geared to assist you with all things career. Some of our programs are specifically geared toward first year students, and I will be presenting on those this morning, one of which is SIGI3. Now, SIGI3 is a computerized self-assessment tool that is designed to help you decide which employment areas would best suit you, depending on your interests, values, like, and abilities. You are given the opportunity to do a self-assessment, and based on the self-assessment, they will give you specific results based on the answers that you inputted into the software. You may also research general information about the nature of jobs and training regarding a number of careers, markability, etc. cetera. SIGI is accessed through our website. You log in using your ID number and your password, the same ID number and password that you use to get onto SAS. Once you have accessed the website, you will be asked to create a, create a new user ID and a new password, that is, and that will be personalized. So every time that you log in, you would use that login and also that password. We also offer individual career counseling for first year students through our in-house career counselor. What this do is it give you ideas, guidance, and information to help you work effectively towards a career choice. So if you do not have an idea of what you would like to do, or if you have already decided, then we can help you to link your subject choices with your career objectives, and also to identify possible employment opportunities. If you are interested in career counseling, you can send an email to UA careercounseling at gmail.com and the career counselor will be more than happy to assist you. 
normally we advise students that once you have completed the self-assessment, once you have used SIGI, then you are required to book an appointment to see the career counselor to discuss your results because most times the information in SIGI it can be a bit overwhelming. So we always recommend that you speak to the career counselor once you have done SIGI 3. We also assist our first year with resume and cover letter construction, resume and cover letter editing. This is done through our website and also via Zoom where we host resume clinics. We also host a number of seminars which we dub the World of Work seminars where we invite professionals from private and public sector organizations to present on topics such as how to write winning cover letters and resumes, the do's and don'ts of the interviews, the expectations of a you graduate in the workplace, labor market information, the jobs that are trending, what are some of the skills that you need in the current job market. And recently we added a new one, which is which we have called the rights of the employee, because most times our students, they enter the workplace and they are not aware of the rights of their specific rights. So that is also a new seminar that we have added these seminars will be held in October and you will receive further information on those throughout the, in the weeks to come. We also have a program which we call the Job Shadowing Experience Program where based on your major, you are placed in an organization for a period of two to three days to shadow someone whose career path is similar to yours. Example, if you are pursuing a degree in computer science, you'll be placed in the IT department of an organization to shadow somebody in that department. From that shadowing experience, you get to confirm your major because you say, okay, this is what I want to do, or based on what you see them doing on a daily basis, you say, okay, this is not what I want to do. You also gain work experience as well because you, you will be there with them for the two to three days. So you will also assist them as they go ahead and complete their duties. We also host a career exposition where we invite public and private sector organizations to showcase their organizations, showcase the different departments. We, they also have on-spot interviews for part-time and summer job as well. This is the perfect opportunity to build your professional network. We also facilitate our students through our referral system where we refer students for part-time and summer jobs. We also facilitate internship opportunities for our students. If you are interested in applying for part-time or summer employment, this is done through our website. You complete the online application form and after which you email a copy of your resume. These are just some of our programs and all our programs are online. They can be accessed via email or they can be accessed via or our website. If you need further information, if you have any questions, any concerns, you can send us an email at placement at uimona.edu.jm and we'll be more than happy to assist you. You can also access us through live support via our website from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m each day. Thank you again for your time and we look forward to serving you for the rest of the academic year and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henry. Now, folks, I, I think we have provided you with so much information in this very short session that you should be able to hit the ground running and get yourself started almost instantaneously. I am very grateful, Ms. Henry, for your presentation. Um, I am sure a lot of our students will take you up on those offers and join up with those programs. At this point, um, it's just for housekeeping. I know we've gone longer than our nine to 10 slot, but I am sure you are, um, you are quite pleased with what has taken place. I am. Um, those presentations have been very, very useful. Um, what I want to speak about now is just how to get yourself situated in the, um, in the department sessions. 
So you've been sent links in email, and I believe in your in the WhatsApp group from the FST Guild Council, and you should have a link to each of the department um, breakout groups. There's a guest link, and all you need to do is click on it, and you will enter into um, into a room with um, well a virtual room with the uh, presenters from the various departments. Some of you had expressed some um, issue with not being, not not having decided which department to go to first um, by virtue of just not having decided, or you are not sure what your courses can take you into. So we're trying to provide that, um, a Zoom link. I'm gonna post it shortly. Uh, so don't leave until you see the Zoom link or you can come back and look at it. But that Zoom link will be for those persons who actually need just that five minutes to help situate them so they can move into the departmental presentations. So you're going to have the department presentations. You're going to spend about two hours or so in those presentations because part of it is looking in at individual majors. So you will have further breakout sessions and you'll spend a little time learning a little bit more so that those of you who have not yet registered, you will be now familiar with what to register for and can go ahead and register. There's academic counseling for those persons who still have some difficulty um, in, in terms of deciding because maybe you're sort of in the middle in terms of where your courses lie, where your subjects lie in terms of CAPE and CSEC and you need some further discussion because you are not, still not sure what direction to take things. So we have academic counseling um, for you this afternoon. So in your department sessions, they will give you all the housekeeping details, all the links to your smaller rooms within the big room, how um, things will happen, and you can communicate with the faculty office in the usual way. So if you bear with us, I will send the um, Zoom link in the chat so that you are able to join us and speak with us for about five minutes so we can get you situated. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in to our uh, main session. And again, welcome to the Faculty of Greatness. We expect greatness from you. And we are sure that from giving you this particular start, that you will be encouraged to move forward. Before I run off, the very, very last thing that I will do is to allow you to hear quickly from our president of our Guild Council. She has, with her team, assisted us in organizing this main session, and they are running in the background doing all that we have been, what you've seen on screen here. So we want to reach out to them and tell them thank you. We want to thank all of our presenters. And I would like to invite Ms. Danielle Mullings to come talk to you for two, two or three minutes, and then um, we will move into our breakout sessions. So Ms. Mullings, join us, please. All right, good morning, everyone. I wanted to just stop by and say a few words as we're closing here. Uh, firstly, it's an honor and a privilege to be this year's president of the FST Guild Committee, otherwise known as the FST GC. As we navigate through a time of immense change worldwide, we remain dedicated to enhancing your experience, whether online or in person. So on behalf of your Guild Committee, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome all new students to the Faculty of Science and Technology. We are the Faculty of Greatness, and it is going to be a great year. One of my favorite quotes is, if your actions create a legacy that inspires others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you're an excellent leader. And this is a quote from Dolly Parton. Therefore, I encourage each of you to get involved, meet new people, and believe in your potential to be great. Trust in your astronomical aspirations and set foot on this journey with a centered and focused approach. We believe in you and we're here to work with you. I'm also going to encourage you to follow our social media pages at FST UIMONA, which you can DM us if you would like to get the different faculty uh, department group chats or if you'd like to get connected. We also post notices every now and then with information from the administration. So please stay updated 
on our Instagram, on our LinkedIn, on our all our pages, basically. And the last message I'm going to leave with you is to take care of your mental health during this time. I know it's a period of great anxiety, but each of us have the potential to be great as we're here in the faculty of greatness. So that's my message for you today. I implore everybody to do your best, give 100% where you can, and remember, stay updated on our social media pages. Thank you.